Well, we're joined now from Westminster by the Conservative MP Connor Burns, who, as we've heard, just spoke in the debate, and from Rotherham by the Labour MP Sarah Champion, who decided not to attend the session in Parliament. Um, Connor Burns, um, well, you haven't won yourself any friends in high places for quoting that taxi driver. Um, but more seriously, uh, it, it, it's, it, it's cost a lot to bring you lot back. Um, why couldn't you wait till Monday when you'd have been back anyway? Well, look, this, this woman was the longest-serving Prime Minister of the 20th century. She won three general elections. She was the first woman Prime Minister of Britain. She helped and was instrumental in victory in the Cold War. I think it's absolutely right that Parliament came back to, to give colleagues in both houses the opportunity to talk about her before uh, we have the funeral next week. But, you, uh, but you, you know her. You knew her very well. And uh, you knew her homespun philosophy. She understood the word austerity. The country is suffering austerity. She'd have been enraged to see all this money wasted on bringing MPs to talk about her and get her... She'd have said, get down to some work boys at once. Well, the, the corollary to that is that she always thought recently that Parliament sat for far too many few days, few days uh, and we've actually come back and done another working day. I think she would have approved of that. The funny thing, actually, knowing her as I do and seeing the reaction when I told her that I'd been, for example, to see the Iron Lady film on, on the same uh, afternoon that I went to have a drink with her, um, she was appalled at the whole concept of the, the Iron Lady film. She had... she been here, wouldn't be watching any of this. She would be actually appalled at the whole prospect of it. Well, now, uh, Sarah Champion, you, you decided to stay in your, your constituency and do a day's work. Um, why did you decide not to come to pay tribute to your fellow woman politician? Well, for me, I um, want to give huge sympathy to Margaret Thatcher's family and all of her friends. But I think that for the next few days, it's a personal, private time. Um, it's absolutely right that people like Connor pay their respects to her. But for me, it shouldn't be a parliamentary thing. It should be a private family thing. It should be a respect and not something that we all get recalled to Parliament for. Well, in this age of austerity, and heaven knows Rotherham is a place that knows austerity better than most, or worse than most, um, do you think this is the moment to be spending this sort of money, millions, on, on a funeral for anybody? Um, I find it very difficult to accept that we will be picking up such a big bill for something like this. Um, absolutely, she was a very um, influential leader. She made a big impact on this country, both for the good and for the bad. Uh, so it's someone that we should ought to recognise. But I really don't think the way that this funeral is going, it seems to be a, um, well, a state ceremony, basically, and, and that's not appropriate. Connor Burns, you won't have seen what we saw, which was to have screens of the House of Lords and the House of Commons on at the same time and they were absolutely a mass of suits and a very few women that's hardly a great testament to the achievement of one great woman as Prime Minister. Well, look, I mean, I, I feel this very strongly. I, one of the things that I think was not so good today about the, some of the contributions to the debate was the focus on the fact that Margaret Thatcher was a woman. Now, Margaret Thatcher, throughout her career, put much more emphasis on what she would do as a politician rather than on the gender of the politician. But look, there are many more women members of Parliament now than there were when Margaret Thatcher came in. I think only 4% uh, of MPs were women when Margaret was elected and in 1959. And still less than 25% now. No, still work to do, absolutely. But the qualities and values of a person are much, much more important than their, their, their sexual orientation, their gender or their ethnicity. Well, I'd agree with you. It wasn't for the fact that you could never escape the reality that she was a woman. You could never escape the reality that she was a woman. You could never escape the reality that she was the most successful um, peacetime political prime minister in the 20th century. Sarah Champion, uh, women in the Commons, uh, what kind of testament to the woman that they were celebrating? Well, I have to say, I've been fortunate throughout my career in that I've worked in the arts and I've worked in healthcare, both professions dominated by women. When I went into the House of Commons for the first time four months ago, I was absolutely shocked how few women there were, but also the whole um, style of delivery in the chamber, not, not in the select committees or in other areas, mm. is very mm. macho, very male-dominated, and it really doesn't help. I mean, it was great that Margaret Thatcher was a woman. She was a very visible role model, and we need more of them, but I'm afraid I didn't really see her helping other women up, and I think it's right that, you know, Connor said that she, she didn't make an issue of her gender. Um, that was her choice, but by not doing that. I, I don't think she's helped make Parliament more open to other women. Well, now, uh, David Cameron can, uh, Connor Burns, do something about the women in Parliament, because in the House of Lords, which was even worse a picture on this score than the House of Commons, he could quite simply, and I know he wants to make some 50 more peers, 
Why doesn't he simply make 50 more women peers? There's a challenge. Well, and in memory of Mrs Thatcher, why not? Well, what won the concept of, of, uh, of appointing people purely on the basis of their gender in tribute to Mrs Thatcher would absolutely appall Mrs Thatcher. She would not be able to comprehend uh, a, a stupider idea. You uh, don't think there are 50 women deserving of no, being no, no, elevated me, above men? With respect, I, that's not what I said at all, and you know that's not what I said. My personal advice to the Prime Minister would not to be to appoint any more peers. The, the, the House of Lords is already bulging at the seams, and there are far too many of them. Uh, one of the arguments that Nick Clegg put, put across for abolishing the House of Lords was that it was too big. You don't, you don't diminish that argument by sticking even more people in it. Connor Burns and, and indeed uh, Sarah Champion in the cold wastes of Rotherham. Thank you very much indeed for joining Thank us. Thank you. And later in the programme, in the first of a short series of films, we'll be hearing from one man on how Margaret Thatcher's premiership changed his life.